Turti Lazaretsky was sentenced by the Court of Assises of the Circuit on April 4, 1912, for carrying a prohibited weapon with a punishment of arrest for 38 days and a fine of 87 lira and a fifth of the court costs. So are they saying that he's, he only did, he hardly did anything wrong. He just was carrying yeah. this gun that was From prohibited. From felony to misdemeanor. It's not the end of the story mm -hmm. because he dared to ask something to the jury. I'm trying to understand the circumstances that caused Lazareski to shoot my great-grandpa. So Gloria suggested that I meet with professor of history, Stephen Hughes, who's asked me to join him at a local cafe. I need to know what happened here in Castelloncello. I don't know why Leopoldo, my great-grandfather, was here at all. And I don't know, I know he was killed here, but I don't know where, I don't know why. Okay, he was murdered here. And uh, what we have is from Il Telegrafo. This is a newspaper okay. from Livorno. And the murder's mentioned down here. And homicide in Castelloncello. Right. And this is an actual oh, translation. Yesterday at 6 p.m., this pleasant village was dismayed by an event that greatly saddened the inhabitants. Terzilio Lazzareschi recently settled in Castelloncello. He's a well-off man who works as a kiln operator. That fits with what we've been finding out. For reasons that are still unknown, uh, <laughs> he met a Francesco Bianchi from Cecina. He himself a kiln operator after a few words just outside the Pilar de Morelli's cafe. Local tradition maintains that this was the cafe Morelli. Yeah. Right outside this. So this cafe has been here that, that long? Yeah. Tercilio, who, who the night before had been insulted and beaten, fired a shot, killing instantly Bianchi. This is actually the indictment, uh, which has all the details of the murder. Oh, this so, comes from oh, the court records. This comes from the court records. And you have to understand, even though it says it's the Luca Court of Appeals, this is the case created by the government for, before his trial, and then their suggestion that he be tried. Terzilio Lazzaretsky on March 7th, 1911, in Castelloncello, fired at Francesco Leopoldo Bianchi a gun from which the bullet struck the occipital region and exited the opposite side, and was the direct and only cause of his immediate death. Yeah, so he was That's shot in the back of the head. Yeah. Uh huh, good, okay. The accused, Terzilio Lazzaretsky, in January of this year, acquired from Dionisio Bianchi the father of the killed, Francesco Leopoldo Bianchi, the business of a lime kiln in Castelloncello, and he employed Francesco's brother, Tito. Okay, right. so they were all, he said, let's all do this together and you can run it and, right. so and you'll, over. You'll, over, you'll oversee it. Right. The good harmony between Lazzareschi and the Bianchi family quickly changed to mutual animosity when Lazzareschi fired Tito Bianchi from his job on March 5th over suspicion of disloyalty. That's a critical piece of the whole puzzle. In a business uh, kind of situation, it could mean a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. um, he was cooking the books, he was talking to competitors. On the other hand, it could just be a reason to get rid of him. Mm -hmm. What's important though, to understand the motivation of why they beat him up and why they were so upset, is this disloyalty is an issue of honor to mm -hmm. Italian men at the time. Mm -hmm. So for them, for, for him to be dismissed, for an issue of disloyalty was a major mark on their honor, on the family honor. Day. Well, also your whole business is at stake too. Yeah, and in fact, if your honor was impugned, mm -hmm. people wouldn't and do business with you. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But we don't know if Terzilio's claims were true or not. Exactly. Is it established that there was disloyalty or there wasn't? Marissa Tomei is at the site where her great-grandfather was murdered. She's just uncovered that Leopoldo Bianchi was shot in the back of the head by Terzilio Lazzaretsky over a business deal gone wrong. Tito was fired for disloyalty. Right. But he had Leopoldo broker the deal. Exactly. Leopoldo set it up. He did yeah. the mediation, he did the negotiations. Yeah. And part of the negotiations were that Tito, his brother, would, would keep working, would keep working mm -hmm. there. I assume in some kind of you know, managerial position. 
-hmm. And so when Zareski broke that deal, for whatever reason, and we don't know, uh -huh. I mean, this charge of disloyalty is all that's, that's in the... That's what I'm saying. We don't know what that is. That's, all we, that's uh -huh. all we have. And their issues of business and honor were very important to them. And so they were very upset and they came after him. On the 6th, Francesco Bianchi was moved to strike Lazzareschi's face with his fists, causing wounds that healed in seven days. Right. I don't know if you know this, but Italians are very concentrated on the face, right? There, there are some very interesting laws about if you mark somebody permanently versus other damage to the body. And so any kind of blow to the face was wow, uh, an extremely, uh, extremely serious offense. Mm -hmm. I'm heading to Luca, about an hour north of Castelloncello, where Lazzareschi was indicted. I want to find out the details of the trial. I want to know what really went on. So I'm meeting with an Italian legal expert and professor of history, Francesco Tamburini. I'm hoping that you can uh, shed some light on anything having to do with Leopoldo Bianchi or Terzilio Lazzareschi or anything about that case. In an article published in Pisa, we got here the article and the translation. Lazzaretsky Terzilio, 30 years of age, from Ponsacco, accused of voluntary homicide of Bianchi Francesco Leopoldo, was acquitted for a legitimate defense. So they found that he had was defending himself. Yeah, mm -hmm. because the, the jury established that there was no felony, but it was just self-defense. Self-defense? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Coming it from behind. It's a strange <laughs> and bizarre uh, trial and uh -huh. judgment. But we have to take into, into account that Lazareski could afford the best man at the tournament law at the moment. Gattai and Lani Gattai were and Lani. two of the most famous attorneys uh -huh. in town. In town. He, it, it's like in order to understand O.J. Simpson and uh, the Dream Team, you know. <laughs> so we found out that uh, Tessilo Zereski, as you can see from this original um, description of the judgment. Oh, my God. And this is, this is the, the translation. September 8th, 1912, so this is a year later. Yeah. Court of Appeals. Tertio Lazzaretsky was sentenced by the Court of Assises of the Circuit on April 4th, 1912 for carrying a prohibited weapon with a punishment of arrest for 38 days and a fine of 87 lira and a fifth of the court costs. So are they saying that he's, he only did, he hardly did anything wrong. He just was carrying yeah. this gun that was From prohibited. From felony to misdemeanor. It's not the end of the story, mm -hmm. because he dared to ask something to the jury. He accepts that he went to a penal trial for voluntary homicide before the court in Pisa, and that he was acquitted following a favorable verdict, that when he was arrested, there were 500 lira found in his billfold. This is him speaking, that's yeah. what saying. He's asking to the court. He's saying to the court, well, when I was arrested, there were 500 lira found in my billfold, and that sum was deposited with the Postal Administration of Pisa, and from that deposit, you withdrew 380 lira for the court costs, and there are still available 119 lira, and he wants his money back. <laughs> three days before the final verdict. He said, and by the way, while we're, while we're discussing this. I want them back. I want, I want that money back, yeah. How much is that money? 2,500 bucks today. Uh-huh. So he it's wanted a about a, a, a third of that back. Mm -hmm. It's a terrible thing to, to kill somebody. I mean, mm -hmm. what is it that drives people to that level of, to, to murder? <laughs> 